Hello everyone, my name is Protosilaos, also known as Prot. In this video I want to show you a few techniques to search and replace text across a number of files or buffers inside of Emacs. I will be using a variety of tools, some of them are built into the upstream, the default uh, Emacs uh, package, others are provided by third-party developers. So I will switch to my Emacs window over here, I already have screen key running, you can see my key presses at the lower part of the screen. Let me start with a couple of examples that leverage the Ivy completion framework. My last video was on Ivy. I shared some tips and tricks on how to make best use of that uh, truly excellent uh, piece of software. Uh, so make sure to check that as well. Let's start with uh, council, council git grep. Uh, this command will run the Unix uh, program called uh, grep inside of the present git repository. So we will do this, let's run this, and we want to uh, search for something. It is producing a list of results, we have 17 matches over here. As I showed in my last video on Ivy, when you have a list of results like this inside of an Ivy prompt, you can produce a buffer out of them by running the command, the key binding rather, control C, control O. So this is uh, the output of the grep buffer, the grep command rather, inside of a buffer. And if you have the package called wgrep, one word, you can take this buffer and edit it directly. You convert it into a writable buffer, which means that now you can use the full power of Emacs to edit text inside of this buffer. So you can use multiple cursors, uh, query replace, iEdit, Anzu, keyboard macros, standard editing commands, whatever it is that you are doing, you can do it inside of this buffer over here. Uh, so let's uh, start with a simple example and we can build from that. Let me just uh, toggle line numbers so that we can uh, be sure that we are on the same uh, page. So you can see, for example, this first match over here, it is on 1122. This is the line number. And we can confirm as much over here. So let's convert this into an editable buffer. It is now editable and it is telling me press Ctrl X, Ctrl S when finished. So to confirm your choices or control C, control K to abort the changes. So I want to do something very, very simple right now. Uh, let's uh, make, uh, let's turn that into lowercase. And I can see that it is uh, giving me some feedback that this line has changed. So this is good. I can see that it has changed over here. What I did is actually uh, turn the first letter over there to lowercase, but here it has not uh, happened yet. So for the changes to actually propagate to the file, I have to confirm them. As we said, control X, control S. Let's do it. Control X, control S. And now, as you can see, the changes have been written to the file over here. So this is very promising indeed. Uh, when you are in this uh, buffer over here, if you press the standard keyboard motions, you can move uh, up and down the lines but you cannot see uh, the, a preview of the match directly. Whereas if you press just N or P, you will move, actually if you see the buffer over here, it is moving to the next match, as you see. So it will even change buffers. So you can see that this is a modus operandi, this file over here, I can see it, and it is taking me to the first match, it is taking me to this match over here, uh, again, and let's go, uh, one up, you can see it is taking me to the emacsinit.org file and back to modus operandi and uh, you can see how nice that is. So you can use this as an index to move around your files or you can continue editing things directly. Let me just focus on this one over here. Actually, let's go to uh, modus operandi so that you can see. Notice uh, this thing over here, just, uh, just the wgrep part. I will make a few changes so uh, and we will come back to this. Let's just focus on this one. Don't worry about the key binding there. It's just something that I have. Uh, let's convert this into an editable buffer. Control X, Control Q. And now let's start recording a macro. What this macro will do, it will go to uh, 
lines that match this search term over here. You can see the matches in uh, cyan and it will move uh, one word forward. Then it will insert a hyphen and then the keyboard macro counter. Uh, by the way, also check my backlog. I have a video on how to make best use of the keyboard macro counter. It is fantastic. Uh, and then once it does that, it goes to the next line and then it goes to, let's go again, uh, to, no, I don't want to do that, but that is okay. That will work as well. Let's leave it over there. That's okay. And let's close the macro over there. So let's see if it works. It works. If I run it again, it works. So let's run the macro until the end of the buffer. We pass the zero argument uh, to the macro and then we execute it. So either you do control U and zero and then you run the macro with F4 or you just do control zero and then F4. So it will run the macro on all the other lines that were matched by the macro. So I can see that I have added just this number over here uh, but these have not been saved yet. Let's come and have a look. I can see that nothing has been written to the actual file over here, nor to the other one, the modus vivendi. But let's come over here and let's confirm our changes. Control X, Control S. So the changes have been written and now you can see the macro counter 0 through 4 over here. Let's go to vivendi and you can see 5 through uh, 10. Okay, I was making some tests earlier and I left something behind. So you can see how it is and uh, all the changes were written to the files. Uh, I don't worry about the actual changes now because this is controlled by Git. So I can uh, always revert back to uh, an earlier state. So we were able to search inside of the directory, then produce an editable buffer out of this and make any kind of change we want to the files. So I just used it on three files, but of course you can use this on as many files as you want. Let's do another way, which again involves uh, an IV interface. Control X B. So this is the standard command to search, uh, to switch to buffers. And let's say that we are searching uh, for uh, something and we have a few matches over here. Again, we can press Control C, Control O to produce a buffer out of this. Control C, Control O. This time, because we are dealing with buffers, the actual uh, interface we have here is different. So this is I buffer. This is a built-in tool. And you can do Control H M to see some information of what you can do with this tool. The first thing we want to do is we want to mark all the items that are here. We do this by toggling the mark with the letter T. Because we had no marks, if you press the letter T, it means go from zero to all. That's, that's the logical meaning of this, of the toggle. So now that we have marked our items, what we want to operate on, we have a couple of options here. One is to press capital Q, which will run a query and replace, a search and replace, as we say, on a string. Or we can run occur. And this is uh, more powerful because this is, again, an editable buffer. Uh, for our purposes, I will run OK, but you can also try query replace as well. It is just a standard search and replace, but you can try it as well. Let's run OK, capital O. It is asking us for a text and it is giving me the default wgrep. Let's run wgrep again, though. Uh, we are here. Let's come over here. Uh, because this is another interface, it is not the grep interface. It, this is built into Emacs, by the way, Occur. And uh, a few months ago, I did a video on Occur. It is, again, extremely powerful. I think it is better than wgrep, actually. Uh, but if you run Control hm here, it will uh, offer you, again, some uh, useful uh, tips. What you are interested right now is the letter E, Occur Edit Mode. So let's go back to our file over here, our buffer. Uh, or care edit mode. So let's run the letter E and we can see that we uh, are able to edit stuff. Type control C twice to uh, confirm your choice and to return to the occur mode. Uh, so let's do again something extremely simple. Let's make this uh, all capitals. And this one already offers me a, a preview of what has happened. I can see that the file has been modified, the buffer rather has been modified, but the changes have not been written to uh, the disk. 
So that's uh, something over there. Let's go to the next one again. And let's just uh, capitalize this one. Okay, something very simple. We can see it, it is capitalized. Uh, nothing too fancy about it. Again, you can use uh, keyboard macros, uh, multiple cursors, the whole uh, thing or the full power of Emacs, you can use it inside of Ocare as well. Uh, no need to show this again. Uh, once you are done, control C twice to confirm your choices. Notice though that the buffer has not been saved. And if I go to Vivendi as well, it has not been saved. Changes have been written, but have not been saved. I can see the one was capitalized. I can see it. This was capitalized. The other was uh, uh, all uh, upcase, but the changes have not been saved. To save multiple buffers, you can press Control X and S. Control X, S. Not Control X, Control S. And it is now asking you to save a number of uh, buffers, one at a time. So save file, etc., etc. You just say yes. Again, for the next file, you just say yes. Or when you have multiple files and you are sure what you want to do, you just press the exclamation mark, the shift and one in the QWERTY keyboard, US QWERTY. The exclamation mark, of course, is something that works for all sorts of uh, prompts. For example, if you have a query replace, let me just show it to you right now. For example, you are editing this and you want to edit it to this, for example, and you say, okay, I want to do it. Now it is asking you, do you want to do it one at a time? And you would press yes and yes, or you can just press exclamation mark and it is running it on all of them. So the exclamation mark is something that works uh, across uh, Emacs. So in case you are not aware, control X, S, yes. So it was just this one. Okay, that's good. So I was able to change that as well. Uh, let's come now to the directory editor. This is, in case you have no idea, this is the built-in uh, file manager of Emacs. I have a lot of videos of, on this. Check my backlog. It is simply fantastic. Uh, so let's come to this one again. Control H M. Uh, and what you are interested here to check is this one over here. It's capital Q. This one does uh, just uh, searches for a regular expression and replaces it with whatever you give. So if you are good with regular expressions, this is extremely powerful. Otherwise, you can just use it for a simple uh, replacement of strings. So let's do that. We just want to mark these two buffers and press capital Q. And it is asking us what we would like to do. Let's take the W grep again. I'm not sure if we have this now. Let's, uh, I'm not sure, but let's, let's take this W grep. And let's uh, convert it into W capital grep and uh, testing. Okay, doesn't matter. Let's run that. We can see the matches. Okay, somewhere uh, I don't have any matches. No, I have them. They are considered much. It is case insensitive. I didn't know that. So we can do this. And again, as I said, you can do it uh, with the exclamation mark. This will work on a per file basis. You can see that it is file one and then file two. So let's run the exclamation mark over here. And then we move on to the next file. Again, the exclamation mark. I can see that it has uh, produced the changes that I wanted. But again, as with the iBuffer interface, the files have not been written. So control X S to uh, save multiple files. And here you can just press yes and yes or the exclamation mark again. Uh, so this is about it, folks. That's uh, the gist of it, the basic idea of what you can do with it. Uh, with Ivy, there are other interfaces as well uh, that do not operate on Git repositories. For example, there is Council, uh, AG, of course, if you have the um, AG executable. I think it's called the Silver Searcher. Or RG, which is RIP grep. Again, this is an external program, an executable. So if you have council, uh, uh, if you have rip grep, you can use that one to do the same thing I did with council git grep. It's the exact same uh, principle. Uh, what I would like to do, but uh, seems to not be possible, is to also use swiper. Uh, let me show you this last thing. Control X B. I want to use uh, no, not Control X B. Sorry. I want to use swiper multi. 
So what you do with this is you select multiple buffers, search for them using Swiper. So you, the way to select, again, I showed this in the previous video, let's search for something. You press Control Meta M to confirm your choice, but keep the mini buffer open. So you move to the next uh, thing. Again, Control Meta M. And let's also search for Emacs. And when you are on the last uh, item you want to select, you just press Control and M. So it has uh, done this one. And now you can use Swiper to search across those three buffers. We do this again. And once you have the results, you press Control C, Control O. We can see that the results are again 17 as were when I did the first search in the video. I cannot actually run uh, write grep, uh, w grep on this one. And the reason is uh, that it also produces information about the column. So other than the line, it also has the column. And I tried editing things this way, but I was not able. So I guess there is some trick that I have not yet found to format this output. If you know about it, please let me know. That would be uh, extremely helpful. But I would like it to be um, uh, to work uh, the same way it works with council git grep, for example, just match lines and then let me edit these directly. But anyhow, even without this, uh, it's again uh, quite uh, easy to um, either use the buffer list, iBuffer, or to search inside of a git repository, or to use rip grep, or to use the directory editor. So there are many ways to search and replace text inside of Emacs. And many of these allow you to do more complex operations rather than just replace one word with another word. You can run keyboard macros and all the other things that we showed. Uh, so that's it, uh, folks. That's just about covers it. Thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.